Hello and welcome to LSAT Games. We are working on Prep Test 91 today, one of the more recent tests. This is actually the first game from the first section of Prep Test 91. This is one of the flex tests that has been released since 2020, everything going on in that time period, where you have three scored sections plus one experimental section. And of course, this is one of the release tests, so the version that you can purchase is a printed test, but if you're on Law Hub or something like that, you would be doing this online just like you would be doing the real LSAT now online. If you're not on Law Hub and need to acquire this book, I've got a link down in the description where you can see it on Amazon. It's one of three tests that LSAC released as a triple prep volume one book along with Prep Test 90 and Prep Test 92. Now, you'll notice what I have behind me is not a picture of the game. I'm doing my best to understand LSAC's copyright policy, and I don't think think, particularly for these newer tests, that they want me displaying the game on YouTube. So I am happy to go through the game, I will explain everything, I will do the setup here, but I can't actually display the game. Disappointing, I know, I'm disappointed about it too, but we're gonna do our best. First game, section one, prep test 91, here we go. Each of five experts, a lawyer, a naturalist, an oceanographer, a physicist, and a statistician, so right away we get our list of elements, L, N, O, P, and S, individually gives exactly one presentation at a conference. The five presentations are given consecutively, and so again, right away that's telling me, okay, this seems like it's probably going to be an order game. One, two, three, four, five is how I'm gonna set up my diagram, and one thing that seems nice right away is that we have a one-to-one -one game. We've got five people presenting and we've got five presentations. Each presentation is given in exactly one of four languages, French, German, Japanese, or Mandarin. French, German, Japanese, or Mandarin. Okay, so that tells me this is probably a two-dimensional order game. So in each slot, not only are we trying to figure out the profession of the person who's presenting, we're also trying to figure out what language they're giving the presentation in. Each expert speaks exactly one of the languages, very nice. The following conditions must hold. All right, some observations before we get into the clues. I can see five experts clearly, but only four languages. So that's making me think, wait, does everyone speak exactly one of those? No. Wait, how do they say it? Each presentation is in one of the four languages, but that doesn't necessarily mean each of the languages gets used. So technically right now, before getting into the clues, everybody could speak French and it would satisfy what the setup said. But clearly I'm thinking I'm gonna use each language once and then that leaves one space left over. And so we'll just kind of see if we can figure out what's going on in the clues. Exactly two of the presentations are in the same language as each other. Exactly two of the presentations. Not at least two, or at most to, okay, I think that implies we are gonna have to use every single language and then exactly one of these languages gets used twice. Obviously we don't know which one right now, could be any of them, F, G, J, or M, but everything else is gonna have to go once because that's the only way that exactly two presentations could be given in the same language. The statistician gives the second presentation in German. Best kind of clue, just get it right on the diagram. The lawyer gives the fourth presentation in either French or Mandarin. The oceanographer presents in either French or Japanese, and the same is true of the physicist. Okay, so oceanographer is presenting in either French or Japanese, but we don't know which one. And then the same is true of the physicist. So the physicist is also in French or Japanese. Clearly I've got some overlap with the French that the lawyer could be using. I can't use it all three times, so I can't have all of O, P, and L speaking the same language. But otherwise I'm not sure that there's much we can do with that yet. The first presentation and the last presentation are in Japanese. Okay, so this tells me several things. One, we now know Japanese is the language that must go with exactly two of the presentations. That also means we can say presentation three is gonna have to be the other of whatever the lawyer does not speak. So if the lawyer is giving presentation four in French, we know presentation three is going to be in Mandarin and vice versa, which is why I'm setting it up as a flippy floppy. It's tempting to think something is going on with O and P in slots one and five, but again, they could also speak French, and so they could end up in slot three. I don't know for sure I can do anything with that. I think the three remaining professions, O, P, and N, right now pretty much could go anywhere. Now, I will say if something like the lawyer ends up speaking French in slot four, you would know that slot three is Mandarin, like we talked about a second ago, and in this case, 
that would also mean it would have to be the naturalist. And then O and P would be first and fifth, but I don't think that's the kind of thing I'm gonna try and write down as a deduction. I'm just gonna get into the questions. Number one is our favorite, a pick a clue style question. Which one of the following could be the order in which the experts give their presentations from first to last? Well, first things first, I know it has to be S going second and L going fourth. So for the answer choices, A is out right away. It does not have the statistician going second. C is out, does not have the statistician going second. B, D, and E are all fine as far as the statistician is concerned but then D has the lawyer going third. That's not okay, so we can get rid of D. Oh wait, and that's a problem for B too. B has the lawyer going third. Okay, simple enough, number one is E. With our pick a clue style question out of the way, I'm gonna jump ahead to number three, which is the first and I think only question here that's a specific question. Now, specific questions usually begin with if or suppose. So number five could also be specific, but just looking at the length of the question, I'm pretty sure it's gonna end up being a complex question that actually changes the rules of the game rather than just adding information to the game. So let's go ahead and knock out number three instead. If the naturalist presents in French, which one of the following could be true? Well, let's bring down what we know already, at least what we know for sure. The naturalist is speaking French. That can only happen right now in slot three, which means the lawyer must be Mandarin, which means we do get that P-O flippy floppy between slots one and five, but those should be the only open possibilities. Everything else we know for sure. Number three said what could be true. The oceanographer presents third. That's not possible. Cross off A. The oceanographer presents fifth. Yes, that's one of our possibilities. B is the answer. All right, let's check on number five. Suppose the condition that the statistician gives the second presentation in German is replaced, and I can stop reading right away. This is, in fact, a complex question, and so we're gonna save that for the end of the game. Let's knock out our other general questions. First, general questions usually begin with which, and we're either gonna use what we deduced, or we're going to use our previous specific scenarios. In this case, unfortunately, there's only one, or we're just gonna try stuff out. But of course, we try to try stuff out as little as possible. Number two, which one of the following is a complete and accurate list of the experts, any one of whom could be one of the two who present in Japanese? Okay, well, obviously this list has to include O and P. So any answer choice that does not have both O and P on the list, we can eliminate. That means we can get rid of a, because it doesn't have P. B and C look okay. D is no good, because again, it doesn't have the physicist. E is fine, but E has another problem. We know the statistician presents in German. So there's no way that the statistician is gonna be on a list of who could present in Japanese. Between B and C, the only difference is that C has the naturalist. Now, obviously on the last question, the naturalist did not end up presenting in Japanese, but I could easily imagine a scenario, if I just wanna test this out real quick, where we had done something like switched um, one of the OPs for the naturalist. You could imagine the naturalist speaking Japanese in slot one, the oceanographer speaking French in slot three, lawyer speaks Mandarin, physicist speaks Japanese, and that seems totally fine to me. That does not break any rules. So number two should be, oh wait, that was an answer choice A. I actually messed this up in a recent game. Be careful once you, you know, pick an answer, make sure it's actually the answer you were intending. We were trying out answer choice C, so it is C. That's the best choice for number two. Moving right along, number four is our next general question. Which one of the following is a complete and accurate list of the languages, any one of which could be the language of the third presentation? Well, didn't we figure this out already? It's either M or F, uh, so that's D. Number four is D. Okay, this is nice. This is a great way to start a section. Prep test 91, I don't know what the rest of it is like, but as far as the games go, at least we're getting a short, easy game out of the way right away. We've just got this one question left, this complex question. Number five, let's take a look. Suppose the condition that the statistician gives the second presentation in German is replaced with the condition that the statistician gives either of the presentations given in Japanese. So we're going to keep the Japanese presentations one and fifth, first and fifth, that was one of the other conditions, but we're gonna say now the statistician is giving one of the two of those. So let's actually just set up 
both of those scenarios. We still know the lawyer is going fourth. We still know it's either F or M, though we don't know which. We don't necessarily know where the German presentation is anymore, because that was the condition that was replaced, unfortunately. Let's see, back to the question. If all the other original conditions remain in effect, which one of the following could be the order from first to last in which they present? All right, I think this is enough to at least start some process of elimination in the answer choices because we know the only two possibilities have S first, L fourth, or L fourth, S fifth. So any answer choice that doesn't have those two is no good. A has the lawyer first, number five A is no good. B has lawyer fourth, statistician fifth, so we need to keep answer choice B. C does not have the statistician first or last, so C is no good. And D has the statistician last, but does not have the lawyer fourth, so D is out. But E has statistician first, lawyer fourth. All right. So we simply need to pick one of B or E and try them out. If B, for example, works, then B is the answer to the question. If I try B and it doesn't work, then E has to be the answer to the question. B has the statistician last, so that would be this scenario here, and who else is in B? N, O, P. And of course, we do know that that first slot is still speaking Japanese. Um, could we keep German going second and then flip-flop M, F? No. So again, this clue still applies. All the other clues still apply. The only clue that didn't apply was the statistician having to go second and speak German. And so I need need O and P to continue speaking either French or Japanese. And so I see a problem here. I can get French into these two slots, but I can't get another Japanese because that would be too many presentations using the same language. And again, if I did something like FF M for slot four, then that would leave out German, which actually is not super important. It never specified every language has to be used, but again, that was a deduction from the fact that exactly two of the presentations used the same language, not two pairs of presentations, not four presentations. So B does not seem possible, should be answer choice E. This is a short game, so I'll go ahead and demonstrate it. On the real thing, you should be done. You should just pick E and move on. But if we want to make sure that E does actually work, we've got statistician, O, N, L, physicist. And again, all we need to do is make sure, since the physicist here is taken care of and speaking Japanese, that the oceanographer is all set. And we can do that by having the oceanographer speak French, which means that the lawyer would speak Mandarin and the naturalist speaks German, and that's totally fine. Because again, the one rule they changed was the one that said the statistician had to speak German. All right, let's check our work. I'm going to pull up the answers here. Number one, E, two, C, three, B, four, D, and five E. Very good. And I notice a little star here on the answer key. This is actually the unscored section. So again, the way that the flex works, the way that the current test works, is you have four sections you complete, three of which counts. One of them will be games or analytical reasoning. One of them will be logical reasoning, also called arguments. One of them will be reading comprehension. But then you have a fourth section, an experimental section, which LSAC uses to make sure that students are answering questions at the right percentages and to test out games for future sections and so on and so on. This game, I realize now, is actually part of the experimental section, so I have no idea if anyone's ever even going to be interested in watching. But of course, they do publish these for a reason. It's still good practice, so Hopefully that gives you a sense of how to complete this game, basic two-dimensional order game, one-to-one -one between the presenters and the spaces. That's typically gonna be a pretty easy game. I do think this one was pretty easy. And that's that, that's what I've got for you today. I will be posting more games pretty much every day, trying to post roughly a game a day. We'll see how it goes. If you have a request, you have a game that you would like to see me do, put it down in the comments and I will get to that as quickly as I can. And otherwise I will see y'all next time.